In Africa, the term dictatorship refers to times of authoritarian control during which the rulers have total control over the populace and frequently repress political dissent and restrict civil liberties. The effects of these regimes on the continent have differed. Certain African dictators have been linked to violations of human rights, unethical behavior, and poor economic governance, but other leaders have instituted measures that have fostered stability, prosperity, or certain societal advancements. Nevertheless, any possible advantages of a dictatorship are frequently eclipsed by its detrimental effects, such as political repression and a lack of accountability. The complicated and diverse character of government on the continent, with both beneficial and harmful legacies, is highlighted by the history of African dictatorships. It's crucial to remember that the phrase, transformed Africa positively, is arbitrary and can be divisive when talking about dictators. In this video, however, we will look through 10 African dictators who had some positive impact on their countries. Welcome back to our YouTube channel and thank you for joining us. If you are new to this channel, do well to like and share the video and hit that subscribe button to join our channel. Number 10, King Mohammed VI, Morocco. King Mohammed VI has encouraged economic growth, enacted political and social reforms, made investments in infrastructure and education, and is not a dictator in the traditional sense but his strictness is what has driven Morocco to its progress. Since 1999, Morocco has been ruled by King Mohammed VI. Significant political and social reforms aiming at modernizing the nation have been implemented during his tenure. To redress historical violations of human rights, he has proposed measures to strengthen human rights, including the creation of the Equity and Reconciliation Commission. Morocco has seen economic growth under his direction, drawing in international investment and carrying out several development initiatives. In addition, King Mohammed VI has been instrumental in advancing peace and stability in the region, especially through Morocco's engagement in the Western Sahara issue. Number 9, José Eduardo dos Santos, Angola. From 1979 until 2017, José Eduardo dos Santos served as president of Angola. While there was a protracted period of political stability during his administration, there were also accusations of corruption and restrictions on democratic liberties. After a protracted civil war, Dos Santos led Angola's restoration, encouraging economic diversification and making investments in social programs and infrastructure. Because of its oil riches, Angola had substantial economic growth during his presidency, although a large portion of the people continued to live in poverty. Dos Santos came under fire for his autocratic leadership style and the concentration of power among his inner circle and family. Joao Lorenzo, his successor, has moved away from Dos Santos' legacy by addressing corruption and advancing openness. Number 8, Isaias Afwerki, Eritrea. Eritrea's president since gaining independence in 1991 is Isaias Afwerki. His administration has been distinguished by an authoritarian system that restricts political liberties, regulates the media, and prioritizes human rights. Under his leadership, Eritrea has experienced severe economic hardship and pervasive poverty, leading many of its people to leave the nation in quest of better possibilities. The policy of forced and indefinite military service implemented by the government has also faced criticism. Eritrea has been charged with fomenting instability in the area by armed factions in its neighbors. Under Afwerki's direction, worries about human rights and governance endure despite some recent diplomatic advancements. Number 7, Jerry Rawlings, Ghana. From 1981 to 2001, Jerry Rawlings, a politician and military officer from Ghana, led the country as president. After first taking office in a military takeover, Rawlings addressed corruption, advanced democracy, and carried out economic reforms. His contribution to the stabilization of Ghana's political environment and the start of economic recovery initiatives was noteworthy. Rawlings was well known for his popular appeal and captivating leadership style. But his government was also criticized for violating human rights and limiting political liberties. In general, Rawlings left behind a legacy that is a complicated combination of his beneficial contributions to Ghana's progress and his contentious policies. Number 6, Thomas Boni Yai, Benin. From 2006 to 2016, Thomas Boni Yai presided over Benin as president. He enacted several anti-corruption initiatives, enhanced governance, and encouraged economic expansion while in office. Yai gave agricultural growth top priority and made investments in infrastructure and innovative farming methods. He also worked to advance the nation's healthcare and education sectors. 
nonetheless, he had difficulties throughout his presidency, such as political unrest and demonstrations against election reforms. A combination of praise and criticism defined Yai's rule, some questioned the progress made in important areas like job creation and poverty reduction, while others praised his efforts to combat corruption and promote economic development. Number 5, Soretz Kama, Botswana. From 1966 until 1980, Soretz Kama led Botswana as its first president. Under his leadership, Botswana went from being one of the poorest nations in Africa to a stable, well-run, and economically wealthy country. Under Kama's leadership, the diamond sector was wisely managed, which was a major factor in stimulating economic expansion. He gave infrastructure development, healthcare, and education top priority, raising the standard of living for Botswana citizens. Kama's dedication to human rights, democracy, and responsible leadership established a solid basis for the nation's future prosperity. Many people continue to honor his legacy as the visionary leader who established the foundation for Botswana's growth. Number 4, Yoweri Museveni, Uganda. Since 1986, Yoweri Museveni has served as Uganda's president. His early years of government were characterized by efforts to reconstruct the nation following years of conflict, stability, and economic progress. Museveni carried out economic changes that encouraged entrepreneurship and drew in foreign investment. He gave infrastructure, healthcare, and education priority, which led to advancements in these areas. On the other hand, Accusations of violations of human rights and limitations on political opposition have been leveled against his president, citing a shrinking democratic space. Concerns regarding democratic governance and the necessity of a smooth and democratic transfer of power in Uganda have been raised by Museveni's prolonged leadership. Number 3, Paul Kagame, Rwanda. Since 2000, Paul Kagame has served as Rwanda's president. Rwanda has experienced a tremendous turnaround under his leadership, with a particular emphasis on economic development, stability, and reconciliation. It is widely acknowledged that Kagame spearheaded Rwanda's comeback from the catastrophic 1994 genocide and put policies in place that sparked economic expansion, the eradication of poverty, and social advancement. His administration has made investments in infrastructure, technology, healthcare, and education a top priority establishing Rwanda as a center for innovation. But Kagame's administration has also come under fire for human rights issues, political repression, and limitations on free speech. The nuanced legacy of Kagame's presidency reveals both successes and setbacks. Number 2, Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso. From 1983 until 1987, Thomas Sankara served as president of Burkina Faso. His radical and progressive agenda was to make Burkina Faso an independent and socially just country. Sankara put into effect laws about education, land reform, and women's rights. He placed a high priority on agricultural self-sufficiency, encouraging domestic output and lowering reliance on outside assistance. The administration of Sankara placed a strong emphasis on anti-corruption initiatives and promoted public involvement in decision-making. But the tragic end to his leadership came with his assassination. Sankara's impact as a charismatic leader and advocate for social change endures, inspiring movements for pan-Africanism and social justice even despite his brief tenure in office. Number 1, Julius Nyerere, Tanzania. Tanzania's first president, Julius Nyerere, also called Mwalamu Nyerere, held office from 1964 until 1985. He was essential to the decolonization effort and the development of contemporary Tanzania. Nyerere promoted African socialism and carried out programs emphasizing independence, equality, and rural development. He presented the idea of Ujamaa, a way of life that prioritizes communal living and collective farming to eradicate poverty and injustice. Nyerere placed a high priority on education, opening it up to all Tanzanians and using the Swahili language to foster unity throughout the country. Although there were difficulties with economic development as a result of Nyerere's policies, his leadership was commended for its honesty, modesty, and dedication to African unification. He maintained his influence in regional and global affairs after leaving office by promoting social justice, peace, and the rights of the underprivileged. In Tanzania and elsewhere, Nyerere's influence as a statesman and pan-Africanist is still felt. It is important to acknowledge that the legacies of these leaders are susceptible to varying interpretations, and there may be divergent views regarding the type and degree of their constructive influence. 
This ends our journey through 10 African dictators who had a positive impact on their countries. Thank you for watching to the end. Please do well to leave a review and comment on what you think about this video. Until next time, stay safe.